delighted to be joined today on Mobile World Live by Visa's Bill Guider. Bill, welcome. Thank you very much. Now, you spoke today at Huawei's event on the subject of the importance of connections for IoT. What was your message around that? The basic message was I think that IoT is the next chapter in terms of how the mobile ecosystem and the commerce ecosystem uh, can coordinate. You know, we, we tried it in chapter one with NFC and uh, it, it took kind of many routes and here we are with Apple Pay and Samsung Pay and Android Pay. I think IoT is, is kind of the next growth effort. I think most people wouldn't necessarily equate or relate Visa with IoT, but c clearly it's an important area for us. Visa's mission is really to kind of displace cash. I mean, when we think about our competition, we really think about cash. And when we think about IoT, whether it's uh, parking or quick service restaurants or filling up with fuel um, or ordering groceries, we think that IoT is the potential to digitize commerce and further get at the cash base because we can make IoT so convenient compared to people taking cash out of the wallets to make payments. That's interesting, Bill, because you don't, I think most people don't necessarily relate Visa with the IoT space, but clearly it's a, uh, an area of huge importance for you. Yeah, when we look at 30, 40 billion connected devices potentially over the next 10 to 15 years, we think a lot of them will a lot want to conduct commerce. Not all of them, but I think commerce will be a part of them. So when we think about connected cars, an example, quick service restaurants, parking, tolls, um, we think about um, connected to white goods that want to make purchases online. Um, we think that there's a way to further displace cash, and that's the way we really think about the growth of Visa's business, is how we displace cash, and we think IoT has a lot of potential. You mentioned earlier that we've tried and we've been there before with NFC, so what's changed? Why is it different now? I think that the, the role that the mobile ecosystem is going to play in IoT is, is much clearer as opposed to what was going to happen at the point of sale with NFC. Um, and I also think that we learned a lot in Chapter 1 in terms of how the payments ecosystem and financial services should work with mobile operators. And so I hope that the roles are clear. I hope we've uh, bridged some of the relationships and kind of the commercial discussion gaps. I, I just think that we've learned a lot over the last six years. Are there still challenges, though? You know, what are the barriers that we still have to overcome? I think the biggest barrier for us has always been security. So we think about security first, right? We'd love to innovate around payments, including IoT, but it has to be safe. It can't break down. And one of the things I talked about at the conference today was our emergence of Visa's token service, which is the way to virtualize any Visa account and put it in a virtually unlimited number of devices or apps to enable Internet of Things commerce. And so I think we've, we've cracked the code on security for Internet of Things, and uh, I'm looking forward to working with the operators. Tell us as well about your relationship with Huawei. This is a Huawei event. Um, perhaps v Visa and Huawei aren't, again, aren't two companies that you would necessarily put together. Uh, what's going on there? Regionally, we're working on a couple small initiatives, Huawei, around how they can help us with mobile authentication because they know so much about location, as an example. But I met with uh, Huawei today in terms of their, uh, their payment strategy people. There's so much more we can be doing. Um, we're just rolling out a big Singapore Innovation Center. One of my colleagues is relocated from California to Singapore. Um, I'm building out a center in Dubai and Miami. So we think there's a lot of ways we can now engage Huawei appropriately in the region, and obviously they've got a lot to offer. You mentioned markets there that have quite developed. Um, is, that, is that a common theme, or is there potential to work together in emerging markets? No, I think, in fact, I think in, in many cases, emerging markets out of necessity are leapfrogging what's happening in developed markets, because payments is already pretty easy in those developed markets. We've got an entire, what we call emerging market strategy around parts of Southeast Asia, Sub-Saharan Africa, to address the unbanked or underbanked. And so I see enormous opportunities there. Because the focus for this conference was IoT, that's where we focused our, 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 our comments so far, there's a lot we can do in emerging markets. Bill, thanks very much for your time today. Thank you.